911, where is your emergency? 1214 Cedar Drive. And what's going on there? I'd like to order a pizza for delivery. Ma'am, you've reached 911. Yeah, I know. Okay. Dispatch scene 2.1 take 4. Is that on? Yeah. Okay. And my, my boss did say this is okay? Yeah. Cool. Move your, move your boom, Brian. Um, I have to start in like 20 minutes, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm interviewing your boss in 20 minutes. Okay, all right. Listen, I've only been here for two weeks, so I, I don't really have, I don't really like know as much. Um, I wanted to get a fresh take on your job. Okay. Well, a, a lot of times people hear about the big fire happening in one part of the county, and the media is covering it, so everyone hears about it. And, and we are handling that, but we're also handling the 40-year-old guy having a heart attack 20 miles away, or the mother trying to revive her unresponsive baby, you know? It's a lot of juggling. It's like a chess game sometimes. It's always about formulating a plan about who's going where. And if something happens, who is going to be backup? We're here eight, sometimes 12 or more hours a day, and we send out fire, medical, law enforcement, and, and other units to difficult situations. Emma, actually, back there, she, um, <laughs> folks say that she delivered three babies in only two months over those headsets, which just goes to show you, you have to be prepared. Every time you pick up the line, you never know what it is you're gonna get. <laughs> you have to be ready. I have spoken to callers in the past who have talked about wanting to end their lives or wanting to hurt others. I've learned mostly that you do affect the people that you talk to. There will always be someone who will remember who you are for what you did or did not do for them. I got a call from a woman my first day here uh, who she was being followed and she thought she was about to be robbed at gunpoint and she was okay but it's like that and the folks here say that it's like you're listening to a horror movie, and the scary part is that you know it's happening for real just right across town. People don't realize it, it takes a toll, you know? Richard. And it's hard to leave work at work and not have it haunt you at home, is what I'm learning. Richard, who's you on a call right now? Oh, yes, sir. Time to wrap it up, guys. You follow me to my office. Thanks so much. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hope, time. I hope you have something usable in there. I have to get on headset. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, wait, one more question. Okay. Can I have a large with half pepperoni, uh, half mushrooms and peppers? Uh, ma'am, I'm sorry, but you, you know you've called 911, right? Yes. Okay. Do you know how long it'll be? Hey, man. Is everything all right? Do you have an emergency? Yes. Yes, I do. And there's someone in the room, so you can't talk about it? Yes, that's correct. Do you know how long it'll be? Uh, I have an officer about a mile from your location. Do you have any weapons in the house? No. Okay, can you stay on the line with me? No. See you soon. Is this job rewarding? Come again? Is this job rewarding? I mean, yeah. Please, stop. The, the reward is knowing that I helped someone that I made a difference. Don't touch me! <laughs> or at least that I tried, you know. This is Officer Younger, go ahead. Officer, there's an emergency a mile from your location. 1214 Cedar Drive. Domestic violence and assault. There are no weapons in the house. Get around now. Please hurry. A dispatcher's needs come second to the callers. If you can't handle it, 
they can't handle it either. You can cry, you can go to the other room, take a deep breath. Some people just need a honey bun and a coffee. You know, whatever it is you need to do. But at that point, when that call comes in, you've got to take care of that person. That is your job. 911, where's your emergency? 